Welcome back everybody. Super important video today is XRP is looking really, really bullish. And it's for a couple of reasons. We have some critical updates to the XRP lawsuit, as well as some, as well as some bullish fundamentals uh, coming out about XRP and updates around what they're doing um, in tandem with the XRP lawsuit. So we're going to cover that really, really quickly um, and get you guys updated as, as quickly as possible. Um, so here we go. Let's dive right in. So first of all, want to um, just set the stage here a little bit. We had a few positive breaks in the XRP lawsuit. Obviously, Ripple is arguing that XRP is not a security, while the SEC is arguing it is. Um, and one of the positive breaks was on September 29th, the XRP community cheered when Judge Torres ordered the release of former SEC Hinneman's documents. So basically, Hinneman's documents um, are, are supposed to basically outline reasons why uh, XRP is not a security and the SEC officials actually going back and forth talking about that. So it'll be really, really interesting to see that entered into evidence and see what that does for the XRP lawsuit. But that's really thought to be a bullish uh, sign in the update of the lawsuit and their ability to win. Now, the other major update that's driving a lot of this bullish sentiment and a lot of the growth is the same judge, Annalisa Torres, approved Iremit and Tapjet's requests to file amicus briefs to defend Ripple Labs. Now, amicus briefs are basically when the court allows um, you know, people that are involved in the company of question and you know, use the product, know it very well, depend on it, and can speak to why it's not what the SEC is saying. So if we scroll down here, Tapjets and iRemit are actually um, XRP uh, and XRL Ledger customers. So here, uh, this is iRemit saying, as a major ODL customer, iRemit is interested in the outcome of this lawsuit because of its reliance on XRP and XRL Ledger. iRemit has deep knowledge of these technologies that will aid the court's evaluation of the arguments advanced by the US SEC. So we have actual Ripple customers coming in and saying, here is why XYZ Ripple is important, XRP is important, and kind of basically framing, framing up the argument saying it is not a security. So we have more and more evidence piling on against the SEC on Ripple XRP side saying it is not a security. So the more that this happens, the more likely we're going to see XRP eventually win out in this lawsuit, which would obviously be extremely bullish. We've already seen that bullish run up um, to this kind of decision that we're expecting at some point, probably in the, in the first half of next year. Now, if you look really, really quickly on what is to come in terms of the lawsuit critical dates, um, October 18th today, um, there are supposed to be some more filings coming in um, as well as the 20th. And then all the way through uh, December 22nd, we have some critical dates where more and more filings are coming in, more and more information is coming in and more is being released than it seems like the SEC would like, which is obviously going to be good for Ripple. Now, now that we discussed you know, those two kind of updates, right? Uh, Annalisa Torres saying that um, they can release the Hinneman documents, which basically may contain some information that is going to play in Ripple's favor. And then also that uh, iRemit and Tapjets who use XRP can come in and testify on behalf of Ripple and kind of be on their side in terms of why it's not a security. After those two updates, we also have some bullish updates just around what Ripple is doing outside of the lawsuit. So while they're being attacked on this side, they're still making really, really big gains and a lot of uh, things are happening on the outside. So first of all, really interesting piece here, JP Morgan, um, you know, this is back in 2021, but I still think it is really important to, to address this again. JP Morgan, who tends to kind of flip flop on, on crypto, drives people nuts, right? Jamie Damon, Jamie Dimon comes out and says he hates Bitcoin, then he loves it. Um, but what they noted is that if they win, if Ripple wins the SEC lawsuit, they're poised for significant adoption. And they lay out one of the most important reasons why this is in this article. So here is why. So SWIFT is basically the international commonly used bank transfer system that Ripple has the ability to replace. Um, and so here is what they say. While traditional money transfers, most commonly SWIFT transfers, are costly and can take up to five business days to complete, transactions using Ripple's XRP can be completed in as little as three to five seconds, and transaction fees are just 0 0.001 XRP. That, that's less than a cent. Um, and SWIFT transfers are more expensive due to the numerous intermediary banks involved that charge fees to both the sender and the recipient. So if you think about these large financial institutions that are sending billions of dollars over the course of the year, sometimes trillions, you're talking about millions and billions in savings just by switching the way that they're transferring their money. And that would basically be a no brainer. So what JP Morgan is saying is the only thing keeping away these, you know, mainly US based financial institutions 
from XRPing using Ripple is this lawsuit. So once that's unlocked, we're going to see a lot of potential for adoption for XRP. Again, super, super bullish in terms of uh, what there, what it could be in terms of an end state, a future state, if XRP Ripple is able to break out of this lawsuit. Now, piggybacking off of that, you know, you probably heard me say, hey, you know, mainly U.S. bank, U.S. Uh, based financial institutions. And why I say that is because Ripple is still growing like crazy, especially outside of the U.S. They've partnered with more than 100 financial institutions. Santander is probably one of the biggest names you'll notice on here. They sponsor a lot of soccer and football clubs. Um, but you're going to notice almost in every major country, Japan, Sweden, Australia, Brazil, Canada, Singapore, India, they have a relationship with a major financial institution that's worth hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. And they're already partnering with them using Ripple for specific real world use cases. And this is really unique, right? A lot of cryptos don't have any use cases, right? It's really just, you know, get in early and sell at the top. And that's really, you know, it's been player versus player type of crypto where XRP actually has real world use cases and is solving problems currently at the current state, even while this loose, this, uh, uh, lawsuits going on excuse me so it's just really really interesting to see how these partnerships just continue to grow even outside of the lawsuit that is occurring and and the ceo has said you know banks and financial institutions outside of the us don't really seem to care that there is a sec us sec lawsuit going on which is really really interesting and that means that they can continue to grow while this lawsuit is going on they didn't just hit pause for two years they've been rapidly rapidly growing and building their partner network now piggybacking off of this kind of bullish trend in partnerships, Ripple basically just a week ago announced new partnerships in France and Sweden. And so they've inked deals with Paris-based Paris -based payment provider for online marketplaces, Lemonway, and they're using their on-demand liquidity system, one of the products they offer. Um, and they're going to help regulate and provide uh, payments for online marketplaces in Sweden, Thailand, um, and as well as France. And another thing that's interesting, too, is that it's a growing company. This is a healthy, growing company. They plan to add 300 staff through 2022 uh, and then more into 2023. But they are on target to hire 300 total people, or, you know, almost doubling their staff from last year to this year. Um, so really, really interesting stuff, right? Ripple is still growing despite what everyone is talking about with the lawsuit these last two years they've been exponentially growing not only their their business fundamentals and their footprint from a use case standpoint but also their company uh, at its core so i think that's something that's an important to note now one of the last things i just want to really briefly touch on uh, just came out uh, yesterday i believe is that ripple has begun testing uh, ethereum smart contract compiled so, excuse me, compatibility uh, in its XRP ledger sidechain. Now, this would be huge in terms of adoption and bringing over potential folks um, that are using Ethereum smart contracts. So it just goes to the same narrative of they keep improving their bottom line fundamentals, the usability of XRP, and building up the use cases for Ripple across the entire world. So if this lawsuit goes well, it could really release the Kraken, so to speak, if the adoption takes hold that we might expect out of XRP. Now, if we quickly, quickly look at the uh, chart uh, here, I just want to point out a couple of things. So if we're looking at where XRP could be going here in the short to medium term, the first thing I want to point out is this incredible volume we've seen develop just over the last week or so. You're going to notice leading up to that positive. So we saw, first of all, we saw murmurs uh, around you know this week um, you know, second week of September of positive news coming out of the lawsuit. Then here we see Annalisa Torres um, basically say we're going to hand over those Hinman documents and they, you know, they might contain something that's um, beneficial to Ripple. We saw a boost after that. Um, and since then, we've kind of calmed down just over the last week or so here. This is the daily candle chart. Um, but nonetheless, you can see you know, buyer interest and investor interest has just increased exponentially compared to what we were doing in this consolidation phase. Now, if we were to see a positive outcome on this XRP lawsuit, again, this is planning on not taking place and not finishing until basically maybe March to June of next year. That's what the Ripple CEO was saying. Um, and so we probably won't see a finish you know, to this within the next, at least within the next six months. So that's kind of the time frame to remember. But if we do see a positive outcome, I think we 
easily uh, see 70 cents out of Ripple. That's kind of the next uh, Fibonacci level to be watching. So if we break that and stand on top of that, then we're playing in some serious, serious um, upside area between 70 cents and a dollar where things could get quite interesting. And then from there, it kind of depends on the catalyst, right? Because if they not only win the lawsuit, then they get listed on exchanges and then they maybe continue to get, let's say, another round of funding or something like that. We're going to see catalyst after catalyst after catalyst. So I think bare minimum, if XRP wins this lawsuit, we want to see 70 cents. I think, you know, worst case scenario, if they lose this, um, you know, we're going to be dropping below uh, 28, 27 cents. So way back below this Fibonacci, which acted as our support over here. Um, so really just some very, very basic uh, price analysis here. Um, you know, nothing crazy. I think it's really hard to do any sort of technical chart analysis on XRP because all of it hinges on the lawsuit, right? Um, so all the success that they're going to have really depends on whether they're going to win this or not. Um, so again, if they do, I think we can easily see above 70 cents short term. If they don't, I think we'll easily fall below that 30 to 25 cent mark. And then it's really just going to be, you know, we hope for a consolidation play down here somewhere and then eventually, you know, make it back to some sort of respectable price. But I think Things are looking really, really good for XRP. Again, they're building um, a lot of momentum fundamentally with expanding their partner network. Um, they're making movements on the lawsuit as well. And they're also hiring and, and boosting the structure of Ripple and, and how the company is functioning by adding additional staff, additional engineers. So they're really, really poised to, you know, cruise into a nice future after that lawsuit if they win it. If not, we'll definitely have some headwinds. So that's what I have for you guys today. Hopefully that was helpful. And let me know in the comments what you think about XRP. Um, thinking about buying some more myself. So um, thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.